Hello lovelies, welcome back to Amy of Melbourne. My name's Amy, obviously, and today I'm going to be following a rosary apparel tutorial in order to make this milkmaid dress. This dress, which is originally by Rosary Apparel. Janelle is another Australian YouTuber, uh, but she is incredibly successful and her videos are amazing. I am obsessed with her and she's a very, very lovely person too. I'm gonna follow Janelle's tutorial and see whether or not the dress she's made, the milkmaid dress, will work on my body, which is obviously very different to hers. Spoiler alert, some changes needed to be made. So I'm gonna take you through those changes, how I would do it next time, um, as well as the actual making of the original tutorial. So make sure that you like and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, enjoy the video. So the first thing you need to work out is what kind of fabric you use. I had several different kinds of linen to choose from, but really it came down to what was big enough to make this rather large project. Um, I ended up having to go for the purple. I wanted to do the green. I love the green, but I couldn't. Next, you need to get yourself your measuring tape. I have an extra long one here, which is great for doing skirts. And you need to follow um, the rosary apparel tutorial. And she says to measure your bust tightly. I say you should also measure your upper bust or upper chest. And then your under bust. Your waist, which should be where your body naturally dints in before your hips and then your hips and your hips are not like your bone of your hips it's whatever the biggest part of your torso is so that could be around your bum probably is then you're going to measure down to the floor see how long how level long you want it to be as well as over your bust or your chest to where you want the sharing to start finally you really need to awkwardly measure around your shoulder I hate doing this measurement myself, but you know, there we are. Then you've got to do your bicep and then whatever this thing is, lower arm. So to make this dress, according to Janelle, you need two giant rectangles. And these rectangles are each going to be your bust measurement. So in the end, your cylinder is double your bust. And then it needs to be however long you want it to be. It's up to you. The length that I have chosen is 106 plus whatever the seam allowance is going to be. So mine's five. Make sure you add seam allowance into everything else as well. Then your next measurement is from the top of the dress to where you want that sharing to start. This is very much dependent on how big your bust is. And you need to include, again, seam allowance. Then you need two more smaller rectangles. And this is going to be based on your shoulder measurement times two. Which to me, my shoulder measurement was 60. So times that by two and we've got 120 centimeters. So if I get my measuring tape, and we work out how big 120 centimeters is. That is a sleeve. That is a ginormous sleeve. Far too big for me. Uh, it doesn't scale very well, <laughs> that particular uh, concept. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make mine about 70, may, maybe, maybe 80, or somewhere in between that, or neither of those things, depending on how big my fabric is. So for my little sleeve, Yeah, it's 75. Split the diff. And then the other way uh, is going to be 50. That's because I've chosen to make my sleeves longer. I want them to be more of a three quarter length. Then we've got the tie. That's our last rectangle. Um, Janelle says to do 140 centimeters. But when I took my upper bust measurement or chest, upper chest measurement, um, that's 125 centimeters. So I'd only have 15 centimeters to actually tie the tie with that's not really going to work so i need to have at least 40 centimeters more than that uh, which would be 165 i'm going to make sure that i have even more than that 
because I want to make sure that the, the tie is definitely big enough. Uh, I'd rather have to cut some off than not have enough. So my tie is going to be 185. Probably longer. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to measure a bunch of stuff. And make sure that we have something big enough. Uh, I'd like to point out here that you really should iron your fabric before you cut things. But we all know that's not how I do it. Stupidly. So make sure that you cut out your big pieces first so that you know that you definitely have enough fabric. I'm going to lay my previously cut piece on top of the next one so that I don't have to remeasure again. Okay, then you're going to work out your sleeves. My sleeves end up being smaller than I originally thought because I didn't want to cut out a new piece. Oh look, it's ironed! Do that. Not what I did. Anyway, here's another unironed piece of fabric that I'm going to cut on. Uh, and we're going to cut out some pockets. Uh, you can find Janelle's uh, pocket pattern. I linked it below. Um, it's really great. This one's mine, but it's uh, not available at the moment. <laughs> So now we're going to do the tie. Um, I have a rotary cutter and um, a ruler that I use for quilting. Make sure that you start off by evening up the edges of your fabric. The fabric store will not cut it particularly straight, that's not their job. Um, and if you use the folded edge um, to create your straight line, your pieces are going to be a lot better. Again, if you could iron your fabric before you do this. Then you're going to join those pieces together so that they're long enough. And then you're going to iron them. You're going to iron out that seam. I've chosen to snip mine. Oh look, I'm, I'm ironing. Get excited. Um, I've chosen to snip mine with some pinking shears to make sure that it doesn't fray. Then you're going to iron that in half. Press it in half. And then you're going to take each of those edges and press them into the center and then repress the whole thing back into the middle half again to make this lovely tie. And then you're going to stitch all the way around it, both sides, to make it lovely. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to overlock everything, um, except the tie. So this is me overlocking the pocket pieces individually. I had to do some slow hand cranking because pockets are a bit awky. and then also the dress. So some parts of my dress I actually didn't have to overlock because I had the salvage and if you have the salvage it doesn't fray but everything else had to go through. If you don't have an overlocker use a um, zigzag stitch. So now you're going to mark 35 centimeters down and place your pocket there onto the right sides of your fabric and then once they're stitched in and ironed out, yeah I know ironing uh, then you're going to place them together, all right sides together, pockets pulled out, glorious, and then you're going to stitch around the whole thing, down the side of the dress, around the pocket, and then continuing on down the side of the dress. So now I am ironing um, the fold at the top. I'm making sure that it is big enough um, for a casing for the elastic and the tie. Um, and then I'm going to use a buttonhole. Mine um, is preset. Make sure that you have your fabric around the right way. And, uh, and then you're just going to do a buttonhole at the top there so that the um, tie can come through. And look, it's a buttonhole. So then you're going to actually stitch down that casing or the, the top hem, basically. You're going to edge stitch that. It's really important to give yourself enough space to actually get your elastic through. <laughs> And 
and then also we're going to just top stitch at the very top there just to make it all look very nice plus Janelle said we had to so we will uh, and then you're going to be really stupid and open up your buttonhole after you've already done that um, don't do that do it first and you're just going to use a quick arm pick just pop it open now we're going to measure where we want to have our shearing start and we're going to use this stuff. This is shearing elastic. You're going to wrap it around your bobbin and you need to wrap it fairly tightly but it does depend on your machine and you're going to have to just experiment with it. My old machine it didn't have to be very tight, this machine it does. You know, give it a go, it takes a while though. 346 minutes later. So once you finish hand winding that on you need to load it into your machine. Your top thread is just going to be plain normal thread. And then you're going to test it. And then you're going to do what you normally do where you test it. And you go, that's wrong, but you're still going to use it anyway. And then have to fix it later. Don't do that. Uh, <laughs> I do that. Don't do that. Eventually I do get it right. But you're going to run those stitches all the way around again and again and again until you have enough you're going to it's, it's up to you how far apart you want them to be but I usually just go with the width of my presser foot Ta -da, there's some more so many all bunching together now yes this does take a long time much 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 later once you finish sewing all the sharing, you're going to get your steamy, steamy iron and you're going to run that over the top and that is going to help the elastic pull back to its regular size and make everything look lovely. Now you're not going to do what I'm doing here, which is put them together. You're going to start by doing the elastic and then you're going to do the tie. Don't, don't be a fool like me. And you're going to thread that through the casing. And it's going to look like this, and you're going to be very unsure of how it's looking, because it's very loose and gappy. So then you're going to add some more shearing, um, see if that fixes it. It doesn't, but that's okay. We'll get there in the end. Yeah, more shearing didn't help. It's more, but no. Anyway. So, you're going to put together the sleeves, you're going to sew the sides of the sleeves and then you're going to do the hem at the top and the bottom. You need to make sure that the one at the bottom is a little bit thinner than the top, depending on the elastic size you use. I used two different sizes because I thought it looked better, but you might not. Um, you have to make sure that they are big enough for your elastic to fit through both sides. You're going to, again, shove that elastic in there using whatever you're going to use and that's what it looks like so far so now we need to uh, attach yon sleeve to the dress so you're going to line up the seams and Janelle says about four centimeters on each side of the seam is what you need to sew just here like this and you're going to sew along the bottom underneath that um, elastic casing for both. And that's it. That's that's the dress. That's what it looks like done. So now that you have seen what it looks like exactly as the tutorial has it, we're going to have to make some changes. So let's talk about what the dress looks like at the moment. The reasons this doesn't work on my body, but it does work really well on Janelle's body is a couple of things. One, my body is a lot wider than what Janelle's is, particularly in the shoulders. I don't have narrow shoulders, but she does. And we're significantly different sizes in the first place, as well as different sized people, even taking weight out of it. Um, I'm 5'10", she is definitely not. Uh, things like that. So when you only have a very narrow sleeve cap, uh, on me this only sits here and I also have rolled forward shoulders so they don't sit there they just don't stay I need them to come further in because this space between my underarm and the end of my arm is a lot bigger than Janelle's the other thing that's making a big difference is actually the weight of my fabric 
it's both the fact that it's quite a lot of fabric in comparison to Janelle's original dress, as well as the fact that I picked a heavier fabric. I like a heavier fabric. I think it drapes nicer over my body and it's a linen and it's what I had. But I have to take that into account. Doing double my bust size all the way around is actually really, really heavy. So trying to expect just those couple of rows of shirring to be able to cinch it in, hold its weight and make it look nice is a lot to ask. If I was to um, reduce the amount of width I've got in my overall dress, that would help that elastic to actually do its job. I also think that considering the size and considering the weight of my fabric, that showing all the way up the back would probably be the best choice to make sure that I don't get that weird bubble effect across the back and to just give support for the dress overall so that it sits nicely. Another significant factor is my posture as opposed to hers. She has quite nice posture. I have terrible posture in case you didn't notice, but you did because it's that bad. So that's a problem with any clothes that I make. Um, and it's a problem again with this dress and that's okay too. I would also say that if you're someone like me who has rolled shoulders and you don't want to have the ability to have the um, shoulder cap come off so that they sit down instead, uh, then you really should think about having a tie or an encased elastic across the top of your back just to help keep that on where you want it to be. Because if your shoulders roll forward, the sleeves are probably gonna fall off all the time no matter what you do if you don't do that. No matter how tight you make the elastic on the side, they're still gonna roll forward, so your sleeves are probably still gonna pop off a little bit. So if I was making this again, but from scratch, I would start with the rectangles. Instead of doing rectangles, I would taper in the top of the body rectangles so that they follow the line from under your arms to your hip. Uh, so just following that down. And then I'd also change the rectangles for the sleeves and I would make the top of those um, on the edges where it would join your underarm, I would taper those as well so that you can um, I'll show you, it's gonna be in the video, but so that you can bring that across this way. So I'm going to make these changes and hopefully they will help. Um, you'll have to wait till the end of the video to see that, of course. Um, if you are making this from scratch, it really is important to, to change the steps so that you include these alterations for your body if you need to use any of them. So to fix this, um, or don't do that in the first place, I have to unpick my sleeves. Three days later. And I also have to unpick um, the sides so that I can um, fix the, the, the taper on the side. Pull everything out, all the things that you did. Sad. And once that's done, you're going to measure in however long, however much you want to bring it in. I brought it in about 10 centimeters each side. Could have done more. Um, and then you're going to sew that and overlock it and then you're going to go to your sleeve and this is the actual important part you're going to take out a triangle from under the arm basically make sure that you think about your seam allowance and how much of that you're leaving behind where you draw is probably going to be your sew line so it's going to be open up like that overlock that section and then you're going to open that out flat and align the seams again so rather than it being a just a little bit of the tunnel that you're adding on, um, you're going to flatten it out. That's, I'm sorry, I tried. Words. Anyway, uh, make sure that you um, sew down the casing for the elastic at the bottom there, but there won't be any elastic in it. As you can see, it's now moved it across, like the sleeve across onto my body a bit more. So now I need to work out how much elastic to add into the top of these sleeves. Once you put the elastic in, you're going to just baste it at the bottom after you thread more elastic through a channel. 
Sorry, I know this is taking a long time, so, uh, you know, take a break for a sec. And then once you finish doing that, then you're going to run a line of stitching along there where I'm pointing to, uh, to make it look like everything else. So I'm just going to base the elastic in so it doesn't move, so I don't have pins stuck everywhere. And then I'm going to test it because I'm attempting to be professional in some capacity. Um, so I think it's looking all right. <clears throat> so I'm going to enclose the casing on the top of the top of the whatever that part of the sleeve that you can see, and then we're going to do that top stitching so that it looks like it's all uniform and meant to be. It also helps secure the elastic in properly. Now, I've discovered that my buttonhole has gone to hell in a handbasket after this much pulling in and out of the everything. So I'm going to hand stitch the buttonhole. This is a little trick. Wrap your thread end around the uh, needle a couple of times and then pull it down and you get yourself a little knot. So basically, when you're doing a buttonhole stitch, you want to start out by doing some satin stitches at the top. So go round and round basic stitches then you're going to do something that looks kind of like a blanket stitch but very very close together all the way around um, the buttonhole and this is going to make it a lot more secure and yeah just give it a bit of help because it needs some help <laughs> after I've been so mean to it. And that's what it looks like. It still looks a bit dodged because I didn't do it at the start, I did it after I kind of wrecked it. But there you go. Now you're going to thread, again, more stuff through. Start with the elastic, do it on its own, and then do your tie. And it should look like this. As you can see, the sleeves have moved a lot further over. They should fit onto my body better. Which is cool. Um, there's a few more things we still need to do, though. So far the dress is looking like this, as you can see my ties are definitely a bit long, which is great. Um, I didn't end up cutting off much, about 20 centimeters, I think, from the end. But we need to make sure that it's not annoying to put on. So we're going to basically stitch in the sides and the back. We're going to make sure that under the sleeves there in the underarm area is flat. And we're going to make sure the back, see, the back is gathered as it should be, and the front is free. And we're going to stitch um, the back and the sides, basically, to be non-elastic, um, and because I, do, <laughs> I don't like having to rearrange all of those gathers every single time I put the dress on and off. Um, so that's where I think it needs to be. I've tried it on. I think it looks okay. It's still oddly gapy on the sides and the back. So I'm just going to sew down over the top of the ties and the elastic, just over the casing to secure that gathering in place. And here it is. This is the finished product. This is the dress. <gasps> well, as fun as that was, it wasn't really me. It's more Janelle. So, let's see if we can make it a bit more Amy. Farmer Brown came from town last evening with some music for his daughter Jane. When she started, started in... All right, guys, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Um, 
if you like this video and you want to see more please make sure that you like and subscribe and do all that sort of stuff also please make sure that you go and have a look at the rosary apparels original tutorial it really is a fantastic tutorial she walks you through everything and she's such a sweet loving person too things that i still need to do a lot actually one of the big problems i had when i was refitting it is that i didn't want to take the pockets out because i was being lazy but i really need to take the pockets out and i think i actually need to leave them out because i think that they're dragging down the sides here and uh, making it sit funny. I need to take out width just in general. Um, I would probably use my waist measurement and double that and then I'd also still go in up here so that it is not so massive, particularly around the back. So you could almost do the front as a full panel or close to and then the back um, have that taper in so that it's not so big and bulky at the back because yeah it's it's quite a balloon spot out there and it's, it doesn't look the best part of that's also that these are a little bit too loose particularly this one um which is another thing that i have to fix uh but overall i think it looks gorgeous and i really look forward to fixing up those things just for my body and how it works for me hopefully the original tutorial works for you but if not try these couple of little tweaks and changes that i've made and see whether that is better for you uh, also if you happen to like the stays that I am wearing this is my own pattern and it's going to be coming out soon so if you jump onto my website and you join the mailing list then you'll be one of the first people to know when I finally release this pattern um, it, it is definitely going to be a plus size inclusive pattern so if that's something that you're interested in hop on and uh, well, hop on and subscribe to my mailing list otherwise you can also uh, follow me on Instagram and then I should be updating on there as well anyway Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate your time today coming to see me. And I'll uh, hopefully see you in the next one. Bye, lovelies.